Welcome to the third part of the firework tutorial. We're going to pick up where we left off after part two and we're going to make the fireworks even more spectacular than they already were. We're going to add another stage to the firework so that when it's fragmented each fragment explodes into a star just like a good firework should. We're going to add another make variable, we're going to add another stage star with the sprite only. And up here, we're going to make sure we set it to a, its own unique value. So stage star, we'll set it to three. And the, the fireworks coming out to make the star will basically be the same, but they're coming out in a circle. So they're coming out all around the fragment that's exploding. So I'm going to add over here, underneath my launch firework, I'm going to add a launch star. So my blocks make a block launch star. And I'm going to need to know where it's been launched from. So I'll have x colon, add an input x, a label y colon, add an input y. And I know what stage you're at. It's going to be at the star stage, so I don't need to pass that in, but I do need to know the colour. So let's add a label colour colon and the input colour. And I think that's all I need in there. I'll run without screen refresh because this will have a loop in it. And essentially a lot of the code is going to be similar to previous. So I'm just going to copy all of that and add it to this one. But it's going to be different enough that I want its own custom block. I mean, each, each fragment will start at X and Y as before. The stage isn't passed in, but I know that when I call launch star, that the stage is going to be star. The colour is passed in. The only other two things I need are the X velocity and Y velocity. But I want these to go off all directions around a circle. Now, a circle has 360 degrees. If I were to launch, if I wanted four fireworks coming off, to make that circle, it would be 0 degrees, 90, 180, and 270 degrees equal spaces around the circle. So I can work out, if I know how many fireworks I want bursting out for this star, I'll put it in a, in a variable called non-star fireworks for this sprite only. In fact, I'll rename that, I'll put underscore at the beginning because I want this to be the same throughout the game and I will set it up here in initialize. So I will set numstar fireworks and let's say we'll have six coming out. Now let's say we have eight coming out. Yeah. Again you can change this easily, especially the way we're doing this. You only have to change this variable and it will update everything. So we're having eight coming out. And so the angle step how how far it goes round for each individual firework is going to be we're going to set angle step and there's 360 degrees in a circle so we're going to set it to 360 divided by the variable we've just created non-star fireworks so it's going to step evenly around and how many times is it going to do it? It's going to do it non-star fireworks times. We need to know the angle it's going to be using. We're going to start it. I'm going to set another variable called angle for this sprite only. The first firework for this star is going to come off an angle of zero, which is fine. And then the next one will just change angle by angle step. So if you imagine that we're having four fireworks, 360 divided by four is 90. Oh, that should be there. Now we're starting at an angle of zero. And then after the first one, we're increasing my angle steps. So we're going to 90, then 180, then 270. So we are going around the circle. But now comes the little bit of math that we need. We're going to use cosine and sine here and a multiply. The cosine and sine 
are used so that we get them traveling in the correct direction. We know the angle, so we're going to add cosine of angle for the x velocity. And we'll just copy that down to the y velocity. It's going to be the same, except we're going to use sine of angle. And the velocity, we're going to, how fast do we want these to travel off? Well, I want them all to travel at the same speed so we get a nice circle. But maybe different fireworks could have different speeds. So let's make a variable called v, in fact let's call it velocity. Just for this, let's call it star velocity so it's obvious what it is. And we will set star velocity before the loop and we'll set it to a random value. And I don't know, maybe between 1.0 and 5.0 I'm just guessing numbers here. You can change these numbers, you can play around with them. When I've, I've set the velocity, so I need to use it. So multiply the direction by the velocity, so they're all traveling at the chosen speed. So when I've launched a star, it sets up, it sets up these variables, but it needs to do that for each star in the loop. Obviously, each star needs to have its x, y, stage color, x velocity and y velocity set up. So I believe that should create all the necessary fireworks. But when do I want to create a star? I'm creating the fragments when the firework has reached the top. So I've got the fragments flying outwards. I want them to fly out for a random amount of time and then explode into stars. So I'll just put in here, so for the fragment, if and then equals, if pick random between 1 and 16 equals 1, then I will launch my star and I'll launch it from where the fragment is, which is x and y, and I'll launch it in the color of the fragment, which is color. And then, same as before, I'll just copy this bit of code. Same as before, after I've launched it, I want to delete the fragment and stop the script. So the reason I've chosen this is each, sometimes the very first time this runs, the random number will be one and the fragment will instantly explode. But sometimes it might be 16 and then 14 and 12 and 16 and two and then one. So each one should last a different amount of time before exploding into a star. And the final little tweak I could do, because the fragments have got a pen size of five, I think the star should be smaller pen size because these are bursting out of the fragment. So let's set the pen size to one. Yes, give that a go. So when I run this, up it goes. We didn't really get the beauty of that because it was off the top of the screen. So let's try another. Up it goes, bursts into fragments and each of those bursts into a circle of fireworks. Are we happy with that? I think the fragments should last a little bit longer, so maybe we'll try increasing 16 to 30. Then the fragments should last a little bit. There we go. Some of them don't go off at all, but I don't mind that because fireworks go wrong sometimes. So always go to proper firework displays where there's safety. And let's have a look at this one. Yes, I do like that. And don't forget, we can change the, the number of non-star fireworks easily. And over here, with the number of fragments, I could do the similar thing. I could create a variable called fragment count for this sprite only. And instead of using eight, I could use fragment count. And at the top, where I'm setting all these up, I'll just set fragment count up. Eight. And that makes it very easy to change things. Like if I want the more fireworks in the stars, say I want 20 fireworks to come out in a star. Let's have a look at this. So it goes up, fragments, and then I get lots of fireworks coming out in the stars, which incidentally I think are taking a little too long now. So I'm going to try tweaking it again. It was 16, that's too short, 30 too long, so maybe 22. But this shows you, just by changing these values now, 
I can change the entire appearance of the fireworks. Now, you've got to consider a slower computer might be struggling with too many. So for now, I'll leave the, I'll change the fragments to six, and I think I'll have 12 coming out of 12 for each star explosion. Now one final thing, I'm never deleting the star explosion sprites. When should they vanish? Well, what I want to do for that is add one more variable to the list, or one more list, in fact. So we'll go to the lists. I'm going to make one called counter for this sprite only. And now we have to make sure we've, the list is empty when we start. So at the beginning, we'll delete all of counter. And when we delete a firework, we need to make sure we're deleting index of counter. Now we're only going to use this particular variable in the star fireworks, so I don't need to actually set it up at all in the launch firework. When I'm launching a star, actually that's not true because my list will get out of sync, so I do need to set it up here. So I will add zero to the counter when I'm creating it there. And for launch star, I will do the same thing. I will add zero to the counter. And update firework. As with all the others, I'll make a variable. I'll call it counter for this sprite only. And we'll set it up like we have done all the other variables. So we'll set counter to item index of counter. I've put it in the wrong one there, haven't I? Nearly made a mistake there. So that should be stage and that one counter. And at the bottom, because this one is going to change, I'm going to duplicate this and replace item index of counter with counter. And the place it's going to change is in here because if it's a rocket it will do this code if it's a fragment it will do this code and the only other thing is a star although just just to be in case that later on i want to add any more stages i will just be specific here and i'll say if the stage is stage star and we'll set the pen size to one and we will change the counter. By one. And what I'm going to have is a star. I'm going to use a transparency. So they're going to gradually fade away. Now, the way transparency works is a value of zero is totally opaque. You can totally see it. And a value of 100 is totally invisible. So I'm going to do this so that it fades steps of five. So 100 divided by five is 20. So after 20 frames, it will vanish completely. So what we're going to do is, in looks, we will set, and this goes in here, the ghost effect to counter times by five. So when counter is zero, it's going to be zero. When counter is one, it's going to be five and so on. And when it reaches 100, we just want to stop. So we'll have if the counter, remember I'm multiplying by five. So if the counter reaches 20, that means the ghost effect has reached 100. So if the counter equals 20, I'll take this code it will delete the firework and stop running this script. Now actually there is a subtle mistake in here because I don't want to do the ghost effect because I'm not using a sprite, I'm using the pen. So that wouldn't have changed anything. What I need to do is 
set the pen. Transparency to count it times five. So it's the same as a ghost, but works for the pen instead of for a sprite. So if I run this code, it goes up, fragments, and then it'll drop and fade away. Try again, get, ah, but I'm running it again. When he goes up, you can hardly see him. So why is that? Well, the reason is I'm not resetting the transparency for normal fireworks. At the beginning here, I should set the pen transparency to zero so that fireworks are totally visible. And the only time it changes is if it's a star firework and it's fading out. So now if I run it, fireworks fine, it fades out and goes. Run it again, fireworks fine. That's very nice. And that's a great place to finish part three of the tutorial. Come back to, for part four and we will finish this firework display in a spectacular fashion. And don't forget if you've enjoyed watching this tutorial then please follow the Rock Coder YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.